So how do you transfer mortgaged property into a trust? Real estate search company Zillow indicates that nearly one third of homeowners own their homes free and clear. But what about those unlucky two thirds who have mortgages on their homes who want to put their homes into trust for estate planning, asset protection, or privacy reasons? After all, property transferred into trust can help avoid probate, provide greater control of how it's distributed to beneficiaries, and provide additional asset protection and privacy benefits from would-be creditors. Unlike free and clear property, mortgage property requires some very important considerations prior to placing it into a trust. So first we'll talk about the due on sale clause, the five essential things that you must do to put mortgage property into a trust. Then we'll talk about refinancing a property that's in a trust, how to sell a property that's in a trust. We'll talk about property insurance when your property's in a trust, hitting the like button so YouTube promotes this video, and subscribing below if you haven't already so that when more videos come out like this one, you'll be up to date right away. And don't worry, I won't hunt you down if you don't subscribe, we're on the honor system here. Hi, I'm the business guy. I'm the CEO of Asset Protection Planners and Lawyers Limited, the largest asset protection company in the country with several attorneys on staff. So if you want to set up a trust or put your property into it, call or visit our website at assetprotectionplanners.com. To begin with, the process of transferring mortgage property into a trust follows the same process as the transfer of property between individuals. A grantor may place a mortgaged home into a living trust by signing a warranty deed, grant deed, or quit claim deed from the current owner to the trust. In this case, the deed will list the trust slash trustee as the property recipient, legally known as the grantee. Then it's recorded just like any other property transfer, the owners sign the property over to the new owners in front of a notary public, and then they record the document in what is usually called the county recorder's office in the county where the property is located. And despite how easy it is to transfer mortgage property into a trust, there are some very important things that you need to do. One thing to consider is the status of the mortgage debt when the property is transferred into the trust. When a mortgage property is transferred into a trust, the mortgage holder's lien will remain on the property unless the trust requires the mortgage to be paid off before distribution to the beneficiary. So the debt is still attached to the property. Due on sale clauses. Another problem that may arise is that some mortgage agreements contain a due on sale clause which allows the mortgage holder to demand full payment on the loan in the case of a transfer. Banks can invoke the due on sale clause when the owner sells his or her home and the home is transferred to the buyer. The lender can demand payment from the seller for the entire balance of the loan. However, when the property is transferred into a living trust, homeowners whose mortgage contains a due on sale clause receive protection from the McGarn St. Germain Depository Institutions Act of 1982. And this is a federal law that creates several exceptions where a lender cannot enforce the due on sale clause. The Garn St. Germain Act exempts homeowners from the due on sale clause when the property is transferred into a living trust in which the borrower is a beneficiary. The Garn St. Germain Act applies to residential one to four family homes and does not contain a provision as to whether the property must be owner occupied. In summary, there are five elements that must be satisfied to prohibit a lender from invoking the due on sale clause when real estate is transferred into a trust. Number one, the property must be residential property, meaning that individuals live there. So it does not apply to an office building, a warehouse, a storage facility, where people don't live. Number two, the property must be between one and four dwelling units. Anything five plex and above requires written approval from the lender. Number three, the property must be conveyed to an inter vivos trust, which means a trust that is created during the grantor's lifetime. The grantor is the one who has the trust created. So in most cases, if it's your property, you would be creating the trust, so you're the grantor. So this is a trust that is active during your lifetime as opposed to a testamentary trust that only activates after you die. Number four, the borrower must be a beneficiary of the trust. This is usually the case for typical revocable living trusts, but what about trusts created for asset protection or long-term care planning or privacy, such as a land trust? If they are created and active during your lifetime, we have seen courts view these types of trusts as inter vivos trusts, and we have not seen lenders invoke the due on sale clause for these types of trusts for our client. And finally, number five, the transfer to the trust must not relate to transfer of rights of occupancy in the property. In fact, in the case of Baldwin versus Wells Fargo Bank, Bank, the court held that the grantor does not need to be an occupant of the property just as long as the right to occupancy was not transferred by the grantor. So the court clearly says that you do not have to live in the property to transfer it into this type of trust. Now, if you are considering implementing a trust-based plan and own real estate
estate with a mortgage on it, it's important to seek legal advice before transferring property into your trust. We do have attorneys on staff who might be able to help. Refinancing. Homeowners may want to refinance the loan to get a better interest rate, to pull money out to make improvements on the property, and so forth. But the law is silent on whether the property placed into a living trust may be refinanced. In cases where a lender agrees to refinance, they may require you to provide a copy of the trust. But more commonly, in my experience, they may require you to put the property back into your own name until they refinance the property, after which the property could be transferred back into the trust, selling the property. Property owners who want to sell mortgage property that's been placed into a trust can easily do so. However, most title companies will want the property owner to transfer the property back into his or her name before selling the property. For example, the title insurance company may worry about missing some clause in the trust that would make it subject to hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in liability. Which brings us to liability insurance. Transferring mortgage to property into a trust can create some issues with fire and liability insurance policies. When transferring property into a trust, an owner can reduce the risk of insurance-related issues by simply reaching out to the insurance carrier to notify them of the change. Often the insurance carrier will allow the policy to remain in place. Otherwise, a new policy with the updated information will need to be initiated. Now we've never seen this as an issue in our experience as long as the insurance company is notified. Would you like to put your property into a living trust for estate planning purposes, a land trust for privacy of ownership, or have questions? Feel free to give us a call at 1-954-41050 or fill out a free consultation form at assetprotectionplanners.com. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with others. I also recommend this video on putting your real estate into an LLC. We'll see you next time. This is The Business Guy.